Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know this platform is a little bit different to what you're used to, um, but we love it because, you know, it's a bit fun. You can walk around to the tables. You can actually network with other people. Uh, so that's why we're using this awesome platform. You could say it's uh, out of this world, couldn't you, G-Chan? We sure are out of this world. <laughs> Place here. Um, before I begin though, oops, sorry, skipped a couple of slides. Before I begin though, I'd love to start by acknowledging the traditional co custodians of the land on which we meet and work today. Um, I, we wish to pay respects to elders past and present and acknowledge the important role all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continue to play within Australia and our developer community as well. Um, so welcome to the Digital Defence Hack. We're excited to be here and hope you are too. Firstly, a couple of house this is a little bit of a new chat uh, platform for you. Um, there's some how-tos here. So you notice you're all on different tables, which means that you can, when we're not in presenter mode as we are now, it means that you can chat by turning your mic and camera on in the bottom menu. If you don't want people to see you, you can just turn your microphone on and you can still chat that way. Um, you can change your view by clicking on the tile view um, down the bottom there and change back to go into floor view again. You can scroll around the map. Um, you can hold down and move the mouse to scroll around the map, I should say, and you can jump between tables. So there's someone here that you go, oh, I might go and uh, see what they're about and, you know, get to know them because networking is super important uh, in business. Um, and at hackathons, find out some new ideas, find out about um, So that's the way to do it on this platform. Just jump around and have a conversation with people. Um, and in this uh, session, you can see that there's a Q&A tab as well. Um, and if you have any questions, guys, please put them in the Q&A tab, which is down in the bottom chat section. There's a little Q&A tab. It's the third one. Uh, or in the general chat, and we'll get to them um, as soon as possible. Okay, so a little explanation over. Now that you can't use it until after our presentation, trap with us. We are recording this as well, so you will be able to come back to it. Um, and there's our certification badge that you can get for the exact thing we're presenting today. And I'll show you the link to that at the end of this as well. Only takes a few hours and it's great for your resume as well as it's actually being useful. So who are we though? I'm Developer Ellie. So I'm a developer advocate here at IBM. I'm an engineer. I'm a developer. I'm a tech for good enthusiast. Um, and I love uh, helping with STEM programs um, and helping people get into coding and developing. So feel free to um, message me on LinkedIn if you have any questions. I'm joined by my amazing colleague, Ji-Chan, as well. Jitan, what do you do here? Thanks, Ali. So I'm also a developer advocate, and I think you kind of stole my profile too. <laughs> so yes, um, I'm also a STEM mentor. Um, I do design thinking. I'm trying to specialize in AI. So um, if you want to talk to me about AI, I'd love to have that conversation with you. Um, uh, yeah. Like, I mean, look at that IBM shirt you've got on. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Perfect. <laughs> um, so a little, it, you may not have heard of um, what a developer advocate is before potentially. So um, what does a developer advocate do? What does that mean? It's maybe not something you've um, encountered before. I definitely hadn't, um, you know, in, in my first few years of uni, I guess. Um, so as developer advocates, what we do is work closely with clients and the community to help developers learn about and leverage our IBM tech. Um, we do this to help people expose you to the products, um, help your understanding of what they can do, um, and to create innovative solutions out of them as well as solve uh, real business problems with them. Um, so we represent IBM at industry events, workshops, meetups, and hackathons like this, and we uh, like to build relationships with people. So we're always up for a geek out session. Um, so feel free to say hello, we don't bite. <laughs> Uh, so why are we here today? So what we're here to do is give you some tools and tips for validating your idea and project and to give you an easy and valuable framework to do this in and make it a success. Um, so I put in the what we're not here to do because I've done several hackathons in the past. I actually won a hackathon oh, quite a few years going back now, but when I was at uni um, and myself and uh, my partner that I won the hackathon with, we went on to an accelerator and a startup program. Um, so you can 
of um, these hackathons. I also actually, um, side story, <laughs> I also met developer Steve, who's another one of our IBM colleagues at that ha um, at a hackathon just before that as well. And it's actually how I have the job I do today because I met someone at a hackathon. So you never know where these sort of things will take you. So give it 100% and get to know people and, um, you know, try and find a great idea for the world. You just never know where it might take you. Um, so what we're not here to do, take out valuable hacking or development time. Although after the amount I speak, maybe you don't believe that anymore, um, but we're not. <laughs> and we're not here to give you a bunch of corporate speak with no relevance to doing a hackathon. Um, we are here to do a design thinking session because it's a really important way um, to validate your business idea before you start coding, isn't it, G-Chan? <laughs> So, do you want to tell us what is um, design thinking and why is it useful? Yep. So, design thinking is a process uh, where we try to develop an understanding for the person that you're going to be creating the solution for. So, it's really um, useful in tackling problems that are not really defined very well. Um, and basically, we're trying to reframe that problem um, from a human centric point of view. Exactly. So at the end of the day, the people, um, you know, that are going to be taking up your product, and especially if you want to try and, you know, create a unicorn startup, you've really got to be thinking from the beginning, who are my users? Why will they use this? What would their pain points be? How can I solve that? Um, and I know, you know, over the years and many hackathons, um, you know, I, I like to um, go to a hackathon, you've got a limited amount of time. I just want to get stuff done. Um, but design thinking really isn't just another buzzword to slow you down. It's kind of a way to validate your ideas so you don't end up on the startup version <laughs> of this. Um, and to be honest, I have had many vivid dreams about ending up on a startup nightmares program. I don't know who would run it though. Still deciding. <laughs> um, so it's the same as kind of the old carpenter's adage where measure once, measure twice, sorry, cut once. Um, so where would we start with design thinking, G-Chan? Um, so before I um, usually go into um, the principles and the, um, the principles of design thinking, I like to generally go through an activity. Uh, but obviously, due to our time constraints, uh, we'll just run you through the activity and kind of explain uh, what what we're trying to um, show you. So first of all, we usually um, tell you to design a vase. So that's to uh, draw a vase and um, we'll give you 60 seconds to do that. Yeah. So the problem pr statement here is design a vase. I mean, we all know what a vase looks like. Here's some things that you might come up with. Although I don't know about you, but I probably couldn't draw it that well. Um, but these look like lovely vase. They do the job, right? Um, what do we do after we've drawn a vase, Jishan? So then we go into a second part of the activity and this time we tr we, ch we kind of change that um, statement a bit. So instead of just drawing a vase, we're going to design a better way for someone to enjoy flowers in their home. Hmm. So this has really kind of changed the way that I would think about um, getting across this problem, I guess. Um, and these are some ideas that other people came up with uh, when we did run this activity. So a flower drone, that'd be kind of cool. I don't know how it would water itself, but I guess that's a pain point to solve later. <laughs> the doggo flower surprise, my personal favorite, I think. Who doesn't love a doggo bringing you a flower? Um, so it's it's pretty interesting to me, G Chan, that the difference in innovation when we ask a different question, right? Um, and, and to me, that's kind of fundamentally what design thinking is. Yeah, definitely. And if we compare, you know, the first activity to the second activity, um, in the first one, we we didn't mention a user, we didn't mention anybody that's going to be using the vase, and then we compare it to our second one where we did introduce a user. And now we're suddenly uh, creating this uh, picture for a user. And, you know, it's much more innovative. You've come, the flower drone, I think is my personal favorite. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so that's kind of the fundamentals of design thinking. And what we're going to do is go through um, some of the principles and concepts of design thinking to uh, help you through um, coming up with innovative uh, ideas like our previous activity. 
So to start off, uh, we're going to look into the what. So um, what, uh, it, what? <laughs> so when we talk about the what, we're, we're talking about intents. So what that really means is that we're just trying to find the right problem to solve. So I guess really for this event, um, this hack intent is defined for us a little bit because you go to a hack, usually there's a theme around it. Um, if there's not, great, the world's your oyster. But um, for this, ha this hack, the intent is really about finding innovative solutions to bolster APAC's digital security practices and capabilities. And there's three substreams to that. Um, the first one being anomaly detection, second one being deep fakes, and the third one being cybersecurity and exploits. So like I said, for this event, our intent is to find for us. Um, so, you know, that's really our reason for being here today, I guess, Ji Chen. Yeah, definitely. So it's really important though, that we do, um, kind of identify the the right a reason for being here as well, isn't it, J-Chan? Because I love this meme um, and the reason it's here is because if you kind of aren't focused on, on a user outcome and a user experience and in exactly what your product is de designed to do, these are the kind of uh, different things that potentially you can come up with. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen this meme before, but I love it. The first one is how the customer explained it, how the project un leader understood it. And, and it's just really easy for that to happen if we haven't kind of defined things well. Um, so what's the next part of our design thinking process, J Chen? So we've just looked at the what, and now we're going to look at the who. So the who is um, a persona, and this is basically a user um, that we're going to be creating the solution for. So in our previous um, phase um, example, we were creating for um, someone to enjoy uh, vase, uh, vases in their home, uh, flowers in their home, sorry. So you can think of these as uh, fake characters or fake people um, who will help um, uh, who will help you to focus your solutions on ideating around your real problem. Yeah, so this really goes back to focusing on your user and why they would use it, what their motivations for using it are, and really um, getting to know who your varying users might be. Uh, so creating a why for our intent, right? Um, and and what I kind of love about this part is, apart from it's kind of fun to make up characters, I do enjoy it, um, you, you obviously have more than one user. There's probably more than one person, for example, and in, in this example, it's an Uber driver. So let's say there's probably more than one person that will use Uber. I mean, you've got your, say, um, young professional going to work potentially. Um, there's executives driving between meetings, someone coming home from the airport. Well, probably not at the moment, but, you know, <laughs> in normal times, that might be a thing. Um, you get my drift anyway. There's more than one persona that might use your product and what you really need to do is think about all of them so that you can tie your ideas together to suit. Um, I guess that's what an empathy map is, right, <laughs> Um, Yeah, in a similar fashion. So after you've created your persona, um, you generally actually just pick one persona and you stick with that persona. I mean, you can create as many personas to start with. But then when you're discussing with your team, just pick one and focus on that one for the rest of the, the design thinking concepts. So um, an empathy map, um, you can kind of think of this as stepping into the persona's shoes. So you're kind of imagining that you are that person. And um, the reason for doing this is that you're trying to understand the persona's pain points. Um, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? Um, how are they acting currently? And it's just like a deeper dive into, um, yeah, really understanding your persona. Really getting to know why they would use your product, I suppose, and and why they would take it up in the first place and, and what they want in it. Um, so we've gone through the what and the who, um, but why are we creating this solution? I think that is the next part of our uh, design thinking process. Um, it, it's all about, you know, asking, does the world need this? Um, that's that's right, isn't it, G Chen? That's what our need statement is. Yeah, essentially. So if we kind of link it back to the previous um, 
uh, concept of empathy map, I mentioned that you need to think about the pain points of the user. So when we're coming to the need statements of the design thinking process, what we're really trying to do is create an, um, an idea that will address those pain points. So the goal of this, or I guess the steps to actually create a need statement is you actually start off with all of your team silently ideating. So you're coming up with ideas um, by yourselves and then putting it on like, for example, a sticky note, or if you're just writing it down in a Google doc, whatever. Um, and then um, you need to format it in a way that so it says the user, so the persona that you've created, needs a way to do something so that they can benefit directly. So here you would be addressing those pain points and then um, saying how they would benefit from um, addressing those pain points. So again, really focusing on our user needs um, and you know honing in on that by putting it in a structured way that our mind thinks about it like like um, you like like that like <laughs> with it at the center, which is the point of design thinking. Um, and you know that's that's how we avoid our startup nightmare scenario and instead come up with a unicorn idea and potentially unicorn startup. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a good framework for helping your mind focus on the right things about that you're going to build. Um, and this is why we are so this is why we're so passionate about this. Um, it's not because we want to you know interrupt anyone's coding time because I definitely don't. I'm a coder and I love to get into it. But um, yeah, <laughs> you want to know what you're developing before you start developing it. Um, and so that needs statement and the ideation phase where you're all kind of throwing out your ideas. Um, this is where no idea is a dumb idea as well. And I love this little um, meme about it uh, because, you know, this kid's created a, a stone wheel basically. Uh, and underneath it, all you've done is chisel all day, do something useful, like helping your brother drag those rocks up the hill. <laughs> um, yep, can't help but have a laugh at that one. Um, and that's exactly why you should always be open to new ideas and no idea is too outlandish or too dumb at this stage. Um, so what's the next part of our design thinking process, g -Tan, now that we've kind of come up with a, a need statement? Yeah, so you would come up with, you know, multiple need statements uh, amongst your entire team. And um, you're, in a realistic situation, you're not going to implement all of those ideas. So um, a method to kind of um, filter those ideas down is actually something called a prioritization grid. So what that really means is you're going to sort your um, ideas based on uh, factors like um, impact and feasibility. So there are two, obviously, two main things you're you're going to be discussing on. So um, the first step of this process is actually to vote, and this is going to be again silent, silently voting. So each person will pick, you know, their um, the idea that they think is the most impactful, and then the idea that's most feasible. So everyone will vote and eventually you'll probably come to, you know, the top three ideas that um, have the most votes. And then we're going to plot it on a graph, uh, on a grid. So you'll say so, that my idea yeah. to send us both to Mars to do this is probably not high on the feasibility scale. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where does that fall on our graph here <laughs> when we end up uh, graphing so, that? All right. So impact, I mean, going to Mars is amazing. So I would say impact is quite high. Um, but feasibility for that is probably, you know, zero to, you know, minimal. So it would fall under that gray area at the, um, at the bottom of that graph that you see. And, and that's the ignore area. and unwise, unfortunately, <laughs> Ali. Well, you know, lucky Elon Musk doesn't think it's unwise and he uh, probably has the manpower to make it more feasible than I can in a, a, few, a couple of day hack. <laughs> Definitely. And so when we come to this um, plotting side, uh, step two of this process, um, you're going to be sorting, so obviously most votes of feasibility goes at the top and most uh, impactful also goes at the top. So we're looking at the light blue section here, which is your no-brainers. 
And these are the ones that you really shouldn't really need to think about it. These are the ones you're going to be implementing. And these are the ones you're going to be doing for this hack. So these are the ones where you go, oh my gosh, that is an amazing idea. And we got the tools and the team to do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we don't want to actually forget about the dark blue section, which is Whoop. might be like a media, medium um, feasibility and medium impact. Um, these might be things that you can put into your backlog and um, put that into your future roadmap. So these might be things you want to implement at a later date. So that's really about focusing down on our priorities, going back to our need and problem statement and making sure they align. Um, so some additional thoughts. Um, so that was just a quick intro, sorry, to um, design thinking and why it's useful. Um, and just a few little tips on, on how you could do a quick ideation phase. So if you don't already have an idea that you want to build out for this hackathon or present for your pitch, a great way to do it is to come together as a team, um, look at your problem statement, ask yourself some outlandish questions, go away, you know, well, not necessarily go away, <laughs> write a few ideas in silence. So give yourself a good five, ten minutes even to write ideas around this. Anything's out, outlandish, it's all in. Write down some ideas, then vote on them. And this is a great way to kind of come up with and then come back together, vote on them and talk through them and maybe you come up with something really cool because you've done this kind of a diamond thinking, it's called, I think, Jay Chan, where you go away, you ideate on your own, and you come back together and talk about those together. Yeah, um, it's a concept called um, double diamonds. That's and that's the idea of um, convergent and divergent thinking. Uh, diverge is when you're kind of doing it by yourself. Um, you're coming up with all the ideas yourself. And then converging is obviously when you come together and um, start dis discussing those and building upon each other's ideas. Yeah, so just a few additional thoughts before we go. One is around the stakeholder mapping, because obviously that was a... Mapping, um, can you tell us a little bit about that before we go? Yeah, so... Um, I'm sure you guys already know what stakeholder is, but what stakeholder mapping does is actually allow you to um, basically identify anybody that's going to be impacted by the idea that you're coming up with, so your solution. So this, and maybe oops, sorry, sorry yeah. so this is where you might consider government partners um, that you know might want to partner with you or fund you this uh, and if people are funding you generally they're a key stakeholder because they have um you know an interest in the outcome of this uh which means you have to take their ideas and thoughts um and specific needs on board as well um so so potentially for this one you want to partner with a a government um i don't know let's just it's it's not homeland security in australia <laughs> i've watched too much american tv <laughs> Border security? But just Wait. any government agency, let's say. <laughs> let's go with that. Um, so let's say you want to partner with a government agency to approve uh, cyber security measures around um, deep fakes or something like that. Um, then they would become a key stakeholder that you'd want to take their advice on boards. And you can, um, just as an aside, you can do that at a hackathon as well. Find someone that does the job that you think you would partner with and talk to them. What are their pain points like? What, what could you do to help? What are some things you could come up with that would really make a difference? Because often the people doing the jobs, um, if you get the information off them, and again, this all goes back to user-centric design, um, if you're getting the information off them firsthand, you're going to know exactly where the pain points are with a great idea to overcome them as well. Um, so the second little um, additional thing was the roadmap, which I think you touched on just a second ago as well, Jay Chan, on the slide before. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with the uh, darker blue section, your medium impact, medium feasibility, if you still really like those ideas, um, put them in the roadmap. Um, a roadmap is basically, you can think of it like a timeline or a schedule of the ideas that you're going to be producing for your solution. And, um, you know, the timing is up to you, three months, six months and nine months. It's just a guide. But you could have six months, one year, and then five year plus. Uh, and the idea is for you to be able to visualize what you're going to be producing in the future and um, 
you'll be showcasing your roadmap to your stakeholders. So um, it becomes a thing that uh, becomes very useful um, as you can actually see um, that there is potential for growth and there is potential um, to uh, grow out your solution. And you hit the nail on the head there, Jay Chan. This is a great thing to include in things like pictures for hackathons because um, this one, it's probably worth noting as well that this roadmap isn't your feature roadmap. So this isn't, oh, here's the features we're going to add to our little um, development pipeline. This is focusing on user experiences again. So written from your user's perspective, a roadmap of experiences you're going to add um, as you go along. Um, and I think it's important to mention this roadmap and to put something like this in your pitch because I, I often find at hackathons it's very easy to like get caught up in the the ideas phase where you want to do everything all at once in the two days that you've got to do it. Um, and the best thing to do is to focus again, go back to your grid, focus on the idea that has the most impact and is the most feasible in that time and put everything else that you come up with, because it's probably awesome as well, um, in your roadmap. Um, to discuss. Just make sure you have the main one done and you can focus in on that. Um, so, you know, hopefully these couple of tips will mean that you nail it <laughs> um, instead of fail it. Um, and that is the idea of design thinking, you know, and and the reason I've got this slide in, I actually made that cake as well. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, yeah, it is the one on the left though, not the one on the right. But I mean, you've got a limited time frame to create an MVP mostly. And the idea is if you do have a vision of where you're going, and that's what design thinking should give you, um, you'll get pretty close to it in even a couple of days. And, and then it's all about going from there. Um, so that's my hot tip. And that's the reason for this slide as well. Um, so go and bring your solution to life. <laughs> I Anyway, um, just before we go as well, there's another um, suggestion I have for you. If you're doing anything around a website or an app or you want to do some prototyping, so obviously with limited time in hackathons, you want to do up a design really quickly. Um, one of the great products out there, it's free, um, you can collaborate, it's, it's online, um, is Figma. Um, this is not an IBM product. This is just something I love using. Um, so a Figma can help you create wireframe prototypes really quickly and they look really good. Um, you can even click through them. The buttons can operate like uh, real website buttons. So it's a really great way to give a user a visual of your product if you're creating something that is um, like a website or an app or something like that, which you may not be in this one. So, but just a, a quick a, a side and suggestion for something to use for prototyping during this hackathon. Um, so we've really only given you the fundamentals of design thinking, but if you do want to get some certification, you can earn um, an IBM Enterprise Design Thinking Practitioner badge. Um, and most of, I think you'll find every, every big tech company these days, um, you know, has design thinking at its core because it's super important to keep the user in mind, keep the client in mind. You don't want to be wasting your time, spending all your time, spending money on creating something that a client or a user doesn't want. Um, so enterprise design thinking is really one of those things that most uh, big firms will be like, yeah, we, we use it too, the same in the way that we use Agile. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here and uh, listening to our talk. Um, I hope you guys had learnt something out of this or if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. You can ask us here, you can ask us in the Slack or hit us up on a LinkedIn if you like. Alrighty, we are going to go back to table mode. So um, feel free anyone to jump around the table um, to talk to each other, to talk to us. We'll be here for probably the next 10 minutes or so. Thank you so much, Arifal, um, for that lovely feedback. Really appreciate it. Um, and as I said, this will be recorded, so we'll give that to the organisers of the Digital Defence Hack and they'll be able to put it up as well. Thanks, everybody. Happy, Thank you. Happy, happy, forward to some solutions.